Yo, what it do guys, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to a simple guide breaking down the Warframes, Weapons, Amps, Arcanes, Rolls, and Builds to use for Eidolon hunting. I will only but assume that you guys know how to kill and capture the Eidolons, but if not, then I can always make a follow-up guide to this one on how to take them down. So just a quick heads up, please pause the video at any point if you want to copy any of the builds. I will use timestamps in the description below if you wish to jump to any certain points mentioned. So, starting off we have Amps, our Operator's Weapon and the Shield Breakers for the Eidolons. As of recent, D introduced one new Prism, Scaffold and Brace of the game. However, they have been re-looked into as they needed some balancing, so I will not be discussing these for this video, and instead I'll be focusing on what I already know works and does the job you need it to do. There are four types of Prisms, there are four types of Scaffolds, and there are also four types of Braces. So you may hear people say these numbers. 1, 1, 1... 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3. Uh, these numbers have a meaning of abbreviation. Simply put, the first number you hear will relate to the prism, then the scaffold, and then the brace. So you always try to remember it as prism, scaffold, brace, prism, scaffold, brace, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2. So taking what we just said into recommendation, if I give you a 2, 2, 3, then we take the second prism available out of four prisms, we take the second scaffold out of four available scaffolds, and we take the third brace out of four available braces. This way, instead of saying the longer names of parts, we simply state the tier number that they, that they go in. So second prism equals the schwack, second scaffold equals the schraxen, and third brace equals the lorin. So hopefully this clears up any confusion you guys may have had, as you'll be hearing this a lot throughout Warframe. I recommend X to free. X, because you won't use your prism that often for the Eidolons. It's your scaffold plus brace that it's mostly used. So for what prism you take is entirely your choice. However, that being said, that does not mean the prisms do not deal damage to the Eidolons. It's just a preference on what you prefer. So 223 is more of the go-to for the Eidolon hunting. The Schwack prism is great at clearing out the Vomilis, the Shrax and Scaffold plus Lauren Brace combination is what you are using to take down the Eidolon shields. So you don't really need to focus all that much on the Prism, just take whatever suits your playstyle. Throughout this video, guys, I am using a 3 2 3 combination. As for the Amps Arcane, go for Fiturius Strike. It's always nice to have extra critical damage. Now let's look into the Operators. We'll start off with the Operators Arcanes. I personally use one Magus Vigor and one Magus Husk for the extra health and armor for my operator. However, I do see some people using two lots of Magus Vigor. Maybe they just prefer more health. Again, this is a little optional, uh, but for all of the Arcanes available, I would recommend survivability for your operator. So, let's get into the focus schools and the two focus schools that stand out for Eidolon hunting, Madurai and Unaru. Let's start with Madurai. Phoenix Talons to increase your physical damage, and Phoenix Spirit to increase your elemental damage. Pretty much self-explanatory there. Void Strike. Whenever you enter Void Mode, crouching when you're using your Operator, you'll be charging up to 12% additional damage every second you spend cloaked. So, to put simply, the more time you spend cloaked in Void Mode, the more damage your next Amp or Weapon Shot will do. This passive is deadly when combined with another player using the Unaru Focus School. And just a quick tip, Void Radiance here, it isn't at all useful for Eidolon hunting, however you have to unlock it in order to reach Void Strike. I recommend not putting any extra focus into Void Radiance once you've unlocked it. Um, whenever you exit Void Mode and uncloak yourself, you will blind the enemies around you for a big cost of your Operator Energy. You cannot blind the Eidolons, so there's actually no need to use your focus points on Void Radiance yet. If you have done, don't worry. It's okay. Now we move into the Unaru Focus Tree. Unaru Wisp, using Void Blast on an enemy will leave behind an Unaru Wisp. When a player's operator picks this up, it will increase their operator damage by 100%. This passive on the Unaru tree is very powerful when the other player is charging their Void Strike from Madurai. If you put these two together, Eidolon shields will not be lasting for very long, sometimes for even under a second. As for all focus schools, there are two waybounds, two in each school. 
So try to unlock and unbind all of them as they will all have a usage for Eidolon fighting. Let's move into the weapons. Throughout this video, I am using the Lanka as my go-to option for Eidolon hunting. However, there are six sniper, and I use that term loosely here, there are six sniper weapons to use for Eidolon hunting. Lanka, Rubico, Volkir Wraith, Vectors Prime, Opticore, and Snipetron Vandal. When it comes to building your weapon, you may have a different playstyle and that is okay. So please take what is better suited for you. Everything has strengths and weaknesses. However, I recommend to build your weapon for flat damage, serration, multi-shot, split chamber, two critical mods, point strike and vital sense, two elementals combined together for radiation, stormbringer and hellfire, and your last two are slightly optional. You can use mods like File Acceleration or Speed Trigger. These are good mods for that DPS value increase. And they also bring down the charge timer for quicker shots on weapons like the Lanka, Opticore, and Snipetron Vandal. Prime Zyra Rounds has been told to do a solid DPS increase. Please just make sure you don't lose your radiation combination when you put this in. High Voltage and Thermite Rounds are good for amplifying that radiation damage. Vigilante armaments are, are good for extra multi-shot, and some other weapons could benefit from IPS values, such as the optical and extra puncture damage. There's also mods for that weapon only, like the Vectus, and if you do have a ribbon, then continue to aim for any of these stats above to help increase your damage per shot. Now let's look into the Warframes, Rolls, and Builds to use. These are the four meta Warframes to pick up and use for Eidolon hunting. Trinity, the caretaker. Her role is to go around and collect all of the laws, then try to charge them. She should bless to heal the laws and keep them alive, and also bless to heal the squad. As for her build, I recommend going bless. Focus on duration, strength, survivability, and utility. Her strength needs to be at 150% or higher for a maxed out damage reduction cap of 75 for her bless. So the higher duration you have means the more time uh, you can keep that damage reduction buff lasting. Take whatever survivability and utility mods you currently have available to you. I use quick thinking, however a max vitality is also a suitable replacement. For the focus school, for Trinity I advise using Matarai. She can also help charge Void Strike and take down any of the Eidolon shields if backup is needed. However you can also switch over to Unaru if no one else in the team has it. Next in line we have Volt, the Dismantler. As Volt you want to place shields around or underneath the Eidolon for people to shoot their amps through. Also, place some shields down for Chroma to shoot through, as this will buff his overall DPS. Remember, Volt can stack shields to increase electric damage when shooting through stacked shields, and he can stack up to 6 of them, so try to stack whenever you can. What I do for his build is focus on his electric shield. Start with Duration, Efficiency, Survivability, and then Utility. The more duration you have will increase the lasting time of the shields when placed. The more efficiency you have will cost less for spamming the shields. Dead Eye Aura, just in case Chroma has gone down or needs to rebuff, and you don't want to waste any time. It's better to save your Void Strike charges for your amp, however, so do not be the primary shooter. For the Focus Skull, I 100% recommend using the Madurai Focus Skull. Volt is one of the only Warframes that can buff the damage you do with your Operator's Amp by shooting through his shields. So spending his downtime charging Void Strike and finding a suitable position to place his electric shield makes him one of the best for dismantling the Eidolon shields. Up next we have Chroma, the big guns. Using his Vex armor to buff his damage, Chroma is the ideal frame for taking out the Eidolon Synovias. Vex armor build, strength, duration, harness adrenaline or streamline for efficiency, and then survivability. So the more strength you have means the more damage increase to your weapons. Mine is currently sitting at 822%. More duration means the more time for your buff to remain. But please keep in mind you can actually refresh this buff, so you don't have to go through the process of self-damaging yourself over and over again. Try to refresh around 3 to 5 seconds remaining just to be safe. Dead Eye Aura because you are the primary shooter. This is an increase to sniper rifle damage by 52.5%. 
I recommend 100% using the Unaru Focus School. Since Chroma needs to damage his health to get his buff, the quickest, the quickest way to do this is to self damage. I use a Glaive Prime. So taking Matarai would be a bad idea because you wouldn't really self damage yourself, you'd probably end up killing yourself. Chroma is the perfect fit for using Unaru as his focus tree. In his downtime, he should be using his Void Blast to pass over those Unaru Wisps to Volt to deal extra damage and taking out those Eidolon shells even faster. And finally we have Harrow, the buffer. Use your Covenant when the Eidolon Sonova has just broke to protect your team from the magnetic damage and the magnetic energy drain. You would convert any damage that you would typically take into a critical buff for you and your team. This is ideal for buffing Chroma. Now there's two types of builds to take here. A veteran build, 95% duration, and a newbie squad build, around 250% duration. So for the veteran player's build, I recommend 95% duration. Your team should take down Eidolon shields within around 1-3 to three seconds. So within all the animations involved, the 95% duration will give you around 11 seconds of the retaliation crit buff for Chroma to time his shot. For the new player's build, you probably won't be able to take down the Eidolon shields as fast, and that's okay. So having more duration will allow that extra time for the retaliation crit buff to last longer. Hopefully this buff will still be up and available uh, for Chroma to take his shot. The more strength you have on Harrow within this build will mean that the less damage you need to take in order to reach your critical buff cap of 50%. You won't really need an awful lot of strength, so I'd recommend keep Intensify within the build for the extra 30% strength. Also, if you are playing Harrow and you use your Covenant before Chroma has buffed his Vex armor, then he will not be able to self-damage himself, so try to keep communication clear. Covenant makes you invulnerable. As for focus, because Void Strike charges only go up to 8 shots, it's best to have a second player charging too. I recommend using Madurai for Harrow too. As his main job is to buff Chroma and protect the team whenever the Eidolon goes down, you can use his downtime to keep charging your Void Strike. Work with Volt and his Electric Shield buff to take down the Eidolon shields. A few special mentions to Oberon, Rhino and Octavia who are also alternatives to use within Eidolon Hunting. All three have good buffing potentials for Chroma, and Oberon can be used as an alternative to Harrow. You see, Oberon's Hallowed Ground also stops the magnetic energy drain from Eidolons, however it does not stop the magnetic damage. So you would put your Warframe on top of the Hallowed Ground, but you would have to switch out of your Warframe to your Operator and then enter Void Mode. This way you avoid losing your energy and you will also avoid the damage. Well then guys, this is my first video for my YouTube channel. I tried to mention as much detail as I could without hopefully making it too complex for newer people to understand. If you found the guide helpful, whether you are new to Eidolon hunting or a veteran looking for a guide to share with others, then please leave a rating. And if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Any popular questions, I can always FAQ them inside the description to help filter search results. Thank you so much for watching. A friendly reminder to subscribe to the channel for more videos and guides in the future. But as always, guys, much love. I'm out of here. Peace.